Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the second programming language and when you should learn it. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a little bit of a story, but this person reached out and said that, hey Frederick, I have been working in Python for X amount of years now and I've started looking into a few other programming languages, but I'm unsure if it's better for me to keep on specializing in to keep focused on Python or if I should start diversifying myself a little bit. And the short answer is uh, you can start whenever you want because you've already passed the first hump. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, you didn't, but I'm, I'm asking for you. You should always always ask yourself this first question before you start thinking about all right am i going to learn all like something new or i'm going to do something else this is the most important question you can ask yourself am i good enough what do i mean by that it's very simple if you have the skills to survive as an industry professional and what I mean by that is not that you are the best coder in the world. I'm not saying that, oh, you work for Google as some super invalid list of some sort or something like that, because you don't have to be top notch or you don't have to be like a master programmer to be a professional. You just need to have the core skills that are needed in order for you to consistently be able to get employment. If you are as a, as a real professional, someone who actually knows their stuff and kind of knows how this industry works, you should be in fairly high demand and it shouldn't be all that hard for you to get interviews, to pass code tests. It doesn't, like, you're not going to pass every code test and you're not going to get every job that you apply for and so forth. But you should see a fairly stable environment for yourself where you don't feel necessarily so nervous that, oh, if you get fired today, you're not going to get another job. If you feel fairly confident in that you will probably get another employment if you, really, if you just try, then you are at a pretty good level. Then you have probably learned enough to, to consider yourself fairly stable as a professional developer. It doesn't have to be a, at the high end level. It just has to be at some level so that you know that you can support yourself if you need right. Because one of the biggest mistakes that you can make, I'm, or rather, I'm not saying it's a mistake, I'm just stating that some people believe that the number of tools that you know is the thing that dictates if you're valuable or not. And to a point that is true, but it's also very important that you actually know them well enough to produce the results. It's actually, if you have to pick, it's a lot better for you to know a few select things really well versus knowing all the things kind of poorly or in a shitty manner where you can't really do stuff. I have tons of people I've talked to who are like, they talk the lingo and like I can hear that they know the names of the tools, but I can also hear that their understanding of these tools are like, it's skin deep. I can't use them for anything. It usually is some mid-level programmer or junior programmer who tries to impress me or something like that where they just talk about all of the different frameworks and their libraries and blah, 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 blah. And then I just ask them a very simple question regarding anything a little bit more in depth. And I can really hear that they kind of become unsure, like they don't, don't really know. And that's a really bad sign because then they haven't matured into their own knowledge. So for you, if you've already been working for a few years here in Python, as an example, and you feel like, yeah, I, I'm not, all that concerned. I probably could get another job if I wanted to. Then this is a perfect time for you to, you know, you start immediately. Just ask yourself this question. This is just me saying my own thing here. Uh, why do you want to learn this other thing? If it's just because it seems interesting with whichever language you're picking, if it's, I don't know, I think that in this case this person was saying Rust or F sharp or something like that, then fucking go for it. Or if it's whatever it is. Anything that you learn, like any extra programming language you can add to your knowledge is going to improve your overall coding skills. Like it's going to deepen your understanding of software engineering and different mental tools are going to start popping up and you're going to start to see patterns. And like there's so, so many benefits to diversifying your portfolio of language that you know, languages that you know, right? But as I said, it's 
I, don't try to do that all too early and don't feel that there's a pressure on you to do this. There are plenty of programmers out there in the world who just know one or two like stacks and fairly well and they kind of just survive in that world. Go and ask the Java and the .NET developers about how many languages they feel like just the average ones. Most of them just stay to like .NET, JavaScript and Java and JavaScript. Like it, there's not that much diversity in diversity going on because there doesn't have to be. Like you don't have to. I'm sorry if the internet has told you that somehow there's some real value to knowing like a hundred languages. There's not apart from impressing people on your CV or making people think, think that you're a really good programmer because it's kind of like knowing a lot of spoken languages. People think you're smart just if you speak a lot of languages and maybe you are but that's not always the case and some in programming it's actually sometimes not all that valuable that someone knows tons of different languages. It doesn't as an example really matter if you know Ruby and Python or Java and .NET. Like, you can absolutely use it but if you're only working in one of them doesn't matter all that much. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're asking if you should, when it's time to start your your path on a new programming language, just ask yourself that question, the first question, have I actually learned my first programming language or my first stack well enough so that I can survive as a software engineer? If you're just a hobby programmer or an amateur or something like that and you don't actually do this for a living, fucking go for it. Like go for it immediately. There's like there's no time like the present, right? Just immediately go for it. Anything that keeps you in, in, like engaged and gives you energy, just go for it. But if you are a professional or if you're aspiring to be a professional and you're worried that there's some pressure on you to learn more languages and stuff like that, usually, guys, it's just self-imposed. It's not, there's no requirement for you to know like five, six, like ten different languages. There's no point in it. Start by learning one language well enough so you can support yourself and then be open to the idea that if you want to switch careers or, well, not careers necessarily, but you want to switch jobs or something like that, then you might have to adopt another language in another company or something like that. And always ask yourself that question. Why am I learning this new language? What's the purpose of it? If it's just for fun, go for it. But if you think it's because you are going to be a better software developer or like you're going to be more employable, then really ask yourself which one, then it's like, which language are you actually learning? Because if you think that every language is just going to make you a better software developer or make you more, attractive on the job market, that might not actually be true. So don't trick yourself into feeling that you have to learn stuff that you're not interested in just to increase your market value because it actually isn't always the case that you get a higher salary or you are more employable just because you know a bunch of languages. Most of the time it's actually better for you to be really good at a few things and just kind of leave it at that. Have a great day.